Hi, I'm Robin Worley, and in today's video, I'm answering a viewer's question. Having watched one of my videos about using presets to save time, they had a specific question. Can you use presets in Affinity Photo to export images at standard sizes without having to enter the values each time? Let's explore that now using one of my photos, which I already have open in Affinity Photo. To begin, we'll switch to the Export Persona. On the left, we then have the Persona tools, and on the right, we see the Studio panels. The panel we're interested in is the Slices panel. We'll use this to create a set of export presets for different image sizes and formats. By default, Affinity Photo sets up a simple export preset for the current image. If we expand this, we'll see it's set to export as a JPEG. The setting 1x tells Affinity Photo to export at the original size. But let's go back to the question. The viewer wanted to resize their image, 1200 pixels wide for landscape shots and 800 pixels wide for portrait images. Affinity Photo can't crop to a specific dimension in an export preset, but we can resize the image based on either the width or the height. If I click the size drop down, you'll see a list of predefined sizes, but none of these match what we need. So instead, all we need to do is overwrite the size with 1200W. That tells Affinity that we want the exported image to be 1200 pixels wide. The W at the end of the value means Now let's add a second preset to go with this. Click the small plus icon just under the first one. In the new preset, Enter 800W as the size. This option will resize the image to 800 pixels in width. You can also enter values like 1200H instead if you prefer to size by height. It depends on your needs. You can then continue adding more presets and sizes if you need to. Now notice that these two sizes are grouped under the JPEG format heading. If we click on the JPEG option in the drop down, you can see that there's a lot of presets already defined for different image formats like PNG and TIFF. But there's a way that we can use this to create multiple export formats. At the bottom of this preset group, notice there's another plus icon. Clicking that adds a new group of presets, and I can set different values for the format. I'll change this one to be a TIFF file using an RGB 8 bit format. Now I'll add a preset to this group. Let's enter 1200W again to create a 1200 pixel wide TIFF version of the image. You can add as many of these presets and formats as you like. Something else that we can do with these export presets is to define how the exported files will be named. Click on the name field next to the scale setting. Here we see the file name template. Right now, it's set to use the slice name followed by the scale suffix. Since we're exporting the whole image, the slice name is taken from the file name of the image. The suffix then comes from the size we entered, like 1200W. But we can customize this further using the variables in the list. Let's remove the scale suffix from this name. Then I'll drag in the width variable into the naming field. Now Affinity Photo will name the file using the original file name plus its new width. I can also add fixed text to this name, like a hyphen, to separate the name and the width. Now I'll highlight the entire name field and I'll press Command C on my keyboard to copy it. If you're using a Windows PC, that's Control and C. Next, click into the name field for the other presets and paste the same naming format using Command V or Control and V if you're using a Windows PC. All our exported images will now follow this new naming convention. So, how do we use these presets? Well, there are a few different ways. First, you can export a single image using one of the preset sizes. Just click the small export icon to the right of the preset. The export dialog opens and you can choose where to save the image. Then click Export and Affinity Photo saves the resized version. However, supposing you want to export both of the JPEG versions simultaneously. In that case, 
click the export icon to the right of the JPEG group. Again, the export dialog appears and you can choose the save location. When I click export, both images are then saved. If there's already a file in the folder with that name, Affinity Photo will warn you. You can then choose to overwrite the file or export only the new items. Now, what if we want to export everything, all the JPEG and TIFF images together, as well as any other formats that you may have created? To do that, you just click the export icon to the right of the full preset group. The export dialog then appears again, where you can choose your folder and click export. Affinity then displays any existing files and allows you to choose whether to overwrite or skip. Once exported, we can open the target folder and check the saved images. You'll see there are now three files with the custom names we defined earlier. If you regularly export images in the same size and formats, this is going to save you a lot of time. However, there's one last step, saving the entire setup as a preset. That way we can reuse the presets whenever we need them. To do that, click the three line menu icon, the hamburger menu at the top right of the slices panel. Choose Create Export Setup Preset. Give your preset a name and save it. Now let's test that this works. I'll close this image and I'll open a new one. Then I'll go to the export persona. By default, the slices panel shows the standard export setup. Let's change that though. Click the drop down at the top of the panel. Here you'll see Affinity Photo's default export presets. At the bottom of this list is the one that we've just created. Click it to load it. Then the three export options appear just as we define them. We can now export the new image using any or all of these options that we created. This is an extremely powerful way to speed up your workflow in Affinity Photo, especially if you need to export images at specific sizes. If you're new to the export persona and want to learn more, I recommend watching this video I did using Affinity Photo 1. It's still relevant today for Affinity Photo 2. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and visit my website for more Affinity Photo tutorials. I'll see you soon for another video.